Well, a warm welcome back. Still Sunday, the 21st of May. Now, we've been looking at this um, announcement from the National Institutes of Health on this new uh, influenza vaccine, mRNA influenza vaccine, that's being trialled. And that's the original report from the uh, clinical trials, uh, dot gov that gives you the details of that. And this is interesting because this is a phase one clinical trial, a very early clinical trial, and yet the UK government has already agreed to buy uh, mRNA vaccines over the next 10 years, uh, a thousand million pounds uh, deal uh, with Moderna. So strange to my mind that the um, the deal and a thousand million pounds of British taxpayer money um, and similar situations in Australia and Canada and the United States has already gone into this before the trial results are even published. This really is quite bizarre in my view that the we have the I guess you have this saying in the states as well jumping the gun <laughs> is jumping the gun why don't we get the trial date first and then think about giving the thousand million pounds for vaccine mass manufacture I would have thought that's the sensible thing to do anyway let's look at some of the uh, let's look at some of the detail from this because it really is quite quite interesting so um, this is this is a clinical trial of uh, messenger RNA universal. Uh, influenza vaccine so it's universal it should act against the claim is all sorts of influenza and we'll be examining that and seeing it might not be quite what it sounds like it is um clinical trial experimental universal influenza vaccine national institutes of allergy and infectious diseases basically all parts of the national institutes of health in the united states enrolling volunteers and it's based in uh, duke university durham north carolina now, it's a phase one clinical trial, so very early. Phase one trials, of course, are carried out on healthy uh, volunteers just to make sure that the drug is, well, not to make sure it's okay, to find out if it's if it's, uh, if it's it's okay. I suspect they are going to find out it's okay, um, but um, I strongly suspect they're going to find out it's okay uh, by their criteria of okayness. Um, but um, anyway, let's look at it. So this is the... This is the codes for the vaccine, messenger RNA, messenger ribonucleic acid. And I assume they don't say, but that stands for lipid nanoparticle. So these tiny lipid particles. And as we've seen from the Australian data, they can get everywhere all around the body. Uh, they're going to check for safety and ability to induce an immune response. Uh, the number involved, up to 50 healthy volunteers, 18 through to 49 years of age. So this is direct from their website. This is not me... This is not me having a joke here. They are claiming, <laughs> the National Institutes of Health in the United States are claiming that by testing 50 volunteers, healthy, 18 through to 49, they can assess the safety of this vaccine. This is a, a parody of research, in my view. 50 volunteers to test for safety i don't think i don't think so national institutes of health but of course you're the national institutes of health you know much more you've got lots of clever people working for you um let's hope there's no uh, vested financial or political interest whatsoever um but the idea that you can publish something on this website here that says there's 50 healthy volunteers and that you're going to test for safety is laughable in my view but hey what do i know let's move on um, three groups of 10 participants each. I mean, this is just tiny. They're going to get anyway, they're going to give 10, 25, and 50 micrograms doses of the lipid nanoparticles containing the messenger RNA to make the influenza antigen. After evaluation of the data to determine the optimum dose, an additional 10 to, re 10 to receive the optimum dose. Now, how on earth they're going to work this out, I've no idea because. This is not directly related to the amount of antigen produced. So you could have someone here where these mRNA particles get into billions of cells and they produce huge amounts of antigen. Someone here, if it's just restricted to the arm and there's very little systemic distribution, they might make relatively small amounts of antigen. This is part of the problem with this technology. How do you predict the amount of antigen that's actually produced from a certain dose of uh, MR, uh, mRNA instruction? Anyway, they reckon they're going to optimise the dose. So we'll, we'll see about that. Um, an additional 10. So an additional 10. Uh, not a big scale trial at all. Um, 
study to include a group receiving a current quadrivalent vaccine. Now, this is the current uh, vaccine. So most of the uh, current influenza vaccines are quadrivalent. They've got four different types or four strains of influenza in it to produce a broader type of immunity. So they're going to compare it with that. They don't say how big this uh, control group is going to be. That's another question mark. Uh, There's going to be comparison between immunogenicity and safety of the two vaccines. So based on this trial of 50 people, they're going to determine the safety of this new mRNA vaccine. We shall, uh, well, we'll we'll question that. that. Do feel free to respond. National Institutes of Health are always open to talking to you. Going to be follow-up appointments for up to one year. Up to one year. Given this is a new vaccine technology, is one year long enough? I don't think it is, because this is a new vaccine technology. I would have thought we need a, a longitudinal follow-up, but hey, that's again, that's only me. Annual uh, seasonal flu jabs, vaccines, um, vaccine tool, va- va- the valuable tool in controlling the spread and severity of influenza, they say. Uh, to what degree does it control the spread? Less sure about that, but I'm just quoting from the NIH side. Uh, do not provide immunity against every strain of flu. So that's true. They only test normally if it's quadrivalent, they have four vaccines. Um, and this is the normal vaccine we're talking about now. And each year, um, basically, it's an informed guess. It's a very informed guess, but it's based on a prediction. So it's a guess of, of what um, influenza strain is going to be prevalent the following year. So you've got to start making this with a lead-up time of about a year, nine months to a year. So they think, well, what is going to be the forms of influenza causing uh, outbreaks of flu next year? Let's make a vaccine to predict that. And, of course, that is that is genuinely genuinely a tricky thing to do but they, they do the best on that with the traditional vaccines then they need time and then the dominant strain of the virus could of course change by then especially if there's something called genetic shift um, which we uh, which can cause pandemics of influenza as of course we have seen many times not an uncommon event uh, so an effective universal flu vaccine um now, this is, this is the uh, acting uh, director, Hugh uh, Akinclose, Akin um, protects uh, its recipients against a wide variety of strains. Well, that would be highly desirable, all the different influenza. The, the, it, to have a universal influenza vaccine would be genuinely a good idea. Uh, ideally, providing durable long-term immunity. And that's basically what he says there. Um, a universal influenza vaccine would be a major public health achievement. I agree with the acting director. Uh, and could eliminate the need for both annual development of seasonal influenza vaccines. Yes, it could if it worked and it was safe, as well as the need for patients to get a flu shot every year. Well, if you had one flu shot and it covered you for life, uh, that would really be quite a good idea. Um, He's saying uh, saying defence against spread of a future flu pandemic. Much less sure about that. We know from the COVID vaccines that... um, they weren't preventing transmission as much as people originally thought they were. Um, would the influenza vaccine prevent? Would this new influenza vaccine prevent transmission? Well, that would need to be proved unequivocally in large-scale trials. Then I'll, I would believe it. Until then, I remain uh, open about that. Open stroke, sceptical, uh, sceptical. Uh, both vaccines use a specific. Uh, so this this is another mRNA vaccine they're talking about here. So this this particular mRNA, mRNA vaccine uses a hemoglutinin HA uh, stem, a stern part of the molecule, not the head part. So the head part keeps changing. The stern part tends to stay the same. So if they produced a, an effective vaccine against this stern part of the molecule, then yeah, that that could work. That could that's got the potential to work. But as we've already said, there's an awful lot of unknowns. And as we looked at in the last video, I hope you saw that when we looked at this diagram here. What we're worried about is systemic distribution of these lipid nanoparticles because they're so small, we know that they can actually go everywhere, not just stay in the arm as we were originally told with the mRNA uh, COVID vaccines. But this is, we're not talking about the COVID vaccines now, we're talking about this new one. Now, as we said, we're gone headlong into this technology 
Um, so this is the British government deal here. Everyone's smiley and handshaky there, which is interesting. The British government are making this deal with uh, Moderna. Now, let's just look at some of the details here. As we've said, why on earth would you make the deal before you, the technology has proved? It's just utterly bizarre. I mean, of course, no one's saying there's vested financial interest uh, b between the British government and Moderna. Of course not, wouldn't say that. But it is a bit surprising that the deal's done before the research has been done. I would do the research first, then I'd know what I was buying, but British government obviously knows more than I do. Um, this, this is that paper here, um, UK Cement's 10-year partnership with Moderna in major boost for vaccine research, the government site. This is the UK government site, boasts up to 250 million doses a year. Now, in, in, in Australia, there's a new plant to produce 100 million doses a year. And uh, also in Canada, and of course, the production in, in the States is already very big. British government's put 1,000 million into it. For starters, we believe, committed to buying Moderna's vaccines, unproved, undemonstrated, unresearched, but we've committed to buying it for the next 10 years. This is how these people are spending our money. Buying an unknown technology up front over the next 10 years. It's not me making this up. Check it out. This is on this is on this uh, this is on this website. There you go. Um look look, look it up and these other websites I've given you here as well. Always put the links on this channel, of course. Uh, it's now we know it's going to be hard well in Oxfordshire. Innovative Innovation and Technology Centre is going to be built up and running by 2025. Moderna have said this will provide the UK public with access to mRNA vaccines for a wide range of respiratory diseases. Might provide Moderna with a few uh, few pounds as well, of course, which they didn't see that mentioned in the article, but maybe it's true. And as we've looked at questions, how do we control the antigen dose? Not told. How long will the antigen be produced for? Not told. Uh, what's the degree of systemic distribution? Not told. And what's the degree of systemic inflammation? Not told. Do uh, watch the previous video where we explain the pathophysiology in a, a little more detail um, if you uh, have an interest in this. Um, I find it concerning that we are going, apparently, hook, line and sinker lock, stock and barrel, whatever expression you want to use, into a new technology which is unproved. And we've committed to that in the UK for the next uh, 10 years. Before these questions about systemic inflammation are answered, inflammation wherever it could, systemic of course, the systemic blood goes everywhere. So systemic blood goes to the myocardium. Systemic blood goes to the lungs. Systemic blood goes to the brain. It goes to the testes and the ovaries. It goes to the kidneys and the liver and the spleen, obviously. These are fundamental questions based on our understanding of the circulatory system, which we've known about for hundreds of years, identified by the English surgeon Thomas Harvey in the English Civil War, quite clearly, but other civilizations have known about it even before that. Leonardo da Vinci has some pretty good ideas about it. This is not new stuff. This is not complicated science. Basic questions which seem to go against what we understand about the basic science and yet seem to be being, being ignored. One of my current concerns is the fact that science is not taken uh, on board properly or, or adequately uh, by, by some government thinking, uh, it would appear. Anyway, they're the questions. Let's have complete answers to those when we've got thorough answers to those i can come back and say hopefully you know what my concerns were mislaid everything's actually a-ok -okay, tickety-boo whatever you want to call it um but i'm uh, at the moment concerned too many unanswered questions too much upfront money uh, too many fundamental biological reasons why this could be a um, a big big problem 
we've got vaccines for lots of things already. Why do we need all these new ones? Why go down the mRNA route um, exclusively at the moment, it would appear? We'll leave it there. Um, thank you for watching.